2005 until 2006. That's correct. Were you then admitted um, before you um, assumed the responsibility of legal advisor? I, I was uh, admitted during that period when I was a legal advisor. Yes. Well, t take us through your experience and tell us how it has prepared you for the position you, you're applying for, just in your own words. Um, I can say that uh, during my articles where, where I was in a candidate attorney, I dealt with uh, criminal matters and civil matters and also um, uh, road accident fund matters. And uh, as a legal advisor, I, also, I was also a legal advisor. At Legal Wise, I was uh, advising people at uh, their personal issues that they brought at uh, the institution. And then uh, as a legal advisor, I was uh, started by being a junior legal <coughs> advisor and then I was progressed to a senior legal advisor. I was uh, dealing with uh, eviction, civil matters, collection. Um, from there, I therefore uh, opened my own firm after resigning there and then I continued. Uh, I worked for my firm, Samkin Joven Associate, and uh, yes, and then I was admitted also as um, in the High Court. I just uh, also started. Uh, I was um, I, I was an assessor, and then in 2012, I was um, an acting magistrate, still dealing with um, criminal work domestic violence matters, that was family and um, maintenance matters, and also civil matters. Um, I've also um, been appointed now as a magistrate. Um, I have received uh, intensive training there as a judicial officer, and um, yeah, I think. And um, when you became, when, or when you served as an acting magistrate, was that for a continuous period, or would you come act as a magistrate and go back to your practice? It was continually because uh, it's, it was uh, from 2012 until the appointment in 2015. What happened to the practice? Uh, when you are still um, an acting magistrate, you can coordinate your practice. I had some stuff that I've, I was just supervising while I was uh, acting as a magistrate. Who was in charge of them? It was a, a professional assistant was Mr. Kelly. Yes. And, um, and then you got uh, appointed permanently in November 2015 and until now. That's correct, Honorable Justice. Yes, thank you very much. Um, Judge President Shongwe. Thank you, Chief Justice. Now, uh, Ms. Ndlovu, as, as, as a magistrate, is it in the district court or the regional court? In the district court. In the district court. Have you acted in the regional court? Not yet. Now, in your practice as an attorney, I see also you are an admitted conveyance, am I right? That's correct. Uh, in your practice as an attorney, uh, did you do any high court work? Uh, yes, I started when I was still also a legal advisor. I used to brief uh, counsel and I used to attend to high court with them. And also, when I was in Athens, I used to brief also counsel and then attend with them. I see. Uh, you, you also mentioned that you 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 were admitted in the in the High Court. Did you did you have a right to appear in the High Court as an attorney? That's correct. And have you appeared in the High Court as an attorney? I've only uh, appeared with counsel at the with High counsel. Court. With uh, counsel, but but not on your own. Not on my own. 
Are you familiar with the uh, electoral legislation? That is the Electoral Code Act, the the, the Commissions Act. Are you are you familiar with those, with that uh, uh, set of legislation? Uh, that I will say yes. I have just made some kind of a research, and I was also following at some cases when they were unfolding. Oh, I uh, see. Even in the media, so. Mm. For instance, which which case that touched you? Mm, the case of the Tlogwe municipality. Um, Miss Ndlovu, uh, would you mind drawing the, the mic closer to yourself? We can't hear you from this end of the table. Sorry. And try to speak a bit loud. I'm hard of hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if, if you don't mind, just raise your voice so that they can all hear. Thank you. You were, you were, you were saying uh, uh, that you, 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 you followed some cases in the electoral court. And uh, I asked which, which case that, you know, uh, uh, drew your attention. Um, yes, I did uh, follow some cases. Uh, one of them is uh, the Tlogwe Municipality Matter, um, where, where it was uh, dealing with um, the postponement of the elections. Let's see. Now, uh, as you might know, the electoral court is a specialized and basically is an urgent court. You, you understand that? Yes, I do understand. Now, the court sits as and when there are cases that are brought to it, and you as a magistrate, would you be available to be sitting as a member of that court whilst doing your duties as a magistrate. Don't you see any problem as far as that is concerned? Um, I will be asking for permission, if need be, from my uh, superiors, but I am planning to avail myself as and when it is needed. I see. Uh, do, you, do you belong to any political party? No. You don't? No. You have never? Sorry? You have never? No. I see. Now, as, as sitting as a magistrate, have you had an opportunity to write judgments in the criminal field as well as the civil, civil law? Yes, I, I had. You I had? Ha I'm, I'm having an opportunity almost all the time when I'm dealing with the matter. Thank you, Chief Justice. I have no further questions. Thank you very much, uh, Justice Shong. Tell me, you, you are in the district court, aren't you? That's correct, Chief Justice. Um, just so that I don't uh, operate on the basis of a perception, my perception has been that in the district court there is so much work you hardly ever have time to settle down to, read, uh, to write a judgment. It's extempore, if it's a judgment you write, then it must be very, very short. How, how long on average are your judgments? Um, it depends on uh, the, the, the facts yes. and the evidence before me. But I would say roughly, um, I can, I, I, I had the longest judgment, it could never take uh, maybe 10 pages or so, could be less than 10 Is that pages. the shortest or the longest? That is the longest. That or the shortest? The short well, the average, I'm sorry, the average? Could be five, four pages, I think. How often do you do that? How often do you write judgments? Um, normally when I, do a matter, when I finish that matter, I give myself a month to complete a judgment. Is there, a, I, do you serve in a busy court or a, 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 a court that is not busy? It's a very busy court. Uh, you can maybe 
sit with maybe five, six judgment that you need to, to draft, but uh, it depends on how you uh, plan your time. At times you can even draft the judgment and also type them yourself because we don't also have staff. And how many matters do you do daily? How many matters do you finalize daily? Depending on um, what's on, on the roll. Yes, or on a daily basis and on, av on average, how many cases do you handle and finalize? In a criminal court, um, it, days differs from each other. It could be 10, 12 matters on the roll. Perhaps they will have uh, maybe few um, uh, section 1121A or 1B, which are the plea of guilt, then um, they, you can finalize those maybe. If there are many, you can finalize all of them. Uh, maybe four or five, I, I, I presume. Okay, let me put it this way. In a week, in how many matters do you write judgment? In a week, maybe it could be two. So on average, uh, in a month, you would have uh, about eight uh, reserve judgments, those in which you must write the judgment. That's correct, I, more or less. More or less. Okay, all right. Commissioner Foree. Thank you, Chief Justice. Um, good afternoon, Ms. Ndlova. Good afternoon, Commissioner. I see you commenced your Articles of Clerkship with Attorney Zahir Omar. That's correct, Commissioner. And it appears to me as if you did not complete the period of articles there, but that your articles were ceded to Rousseau and Rousseau attorneys. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, articles are not ceded uh, unless there are specific reasons for it. That's correct. Would you care to elaborate on the reasons why your articles were ceded? Um, we were specializing much on criminal works, uh, and then we were also dealing a little bit of um, maintenance work. So I, I needed more experience in other areas of law. So on Mr. Rousseau, they were also dealing with civil matters. They were also do, dealing with um, road accident fund, estate, disease estates. So I, I was strategically uh, acquiring experience during my, seat, my sitting of those, those articles. So you, your articles were seated at your request? That's correct. In order to gain more experience at another firm? That's correct. Isn't that unusual? It doesn't normally happen, does it? That your experience that candidate attorneys do that? Um, if it is provided that it can be done, though it is unusual, but if you see it can benefit you, then you would necessarily take the opportunity. That's what I did in that circumstance. I won't take that further. The Chief Justice dealt with the fact that you had your own firm and then simultaneously acted as a magistrate. Now, some five years after you completed your articles, you established your own firm. Is that correct? The, that's not correct. Um, or did you join a firm? I started by being a legal advisor for no, a... No, I'm, I, I know, but I'm now at the point in 2011. Yes, 2011. Yes. Was That's it a correct. firm that you established yourself? That's correct. From, from scratch? That's correct. That was in 2011? That's correct. And that firm existed until 2015? That's correct. It's a period of four years. For three of those four years, you were an acting magistrate. That's correct. And if I understood you correctly, 
correctly, you left the day-to-day -day running of the firm to a professional assistant. Sorry? If I understood you correctly, the day-to-day -day running of the firm was done or left to a professional assistant. Is that's, that correct? That's correct. Now, would you agree with me that it's hard work and it takes a lot of time and effort to establish a law firm? That's correct. How is it possible that in that period you then decided to rather act as a magistrate? Uh, honestly, if I can say, uh, Honorable Commissioner, I strategically um, groomed uh, that um, person because I was within my firm and um, I was also not absent in my firm. I was absent during the day, but when I was completing, when I completed my uh, duties during the day, I used to go there and uh, be there with them. I was still the one drafting everything or monitoring them when they draft, and then I was um, hands on with my firm, even with the marketing of the firm, receiving work and clients from um, the clients that I was receiving uh, from for my firm. I, I was hands on. I was even uh, working during uh, weekends. We all do, don't we, Ms. Um So are you suggesting to me that one can establish a law firm and then effectively and successfully run that law firm after hours? Is that what you're saying to me? Even though I can't say exactly, but what I can say is that it was possible, I did it, and it was also a successful firm. So successful that it closed down in 2015? Its closure was not due to the fact that it was unsuccessful. It was due to the fact that I'm not allowed to continue as a magistrate and also own a, a firm in my name. Have you seen the comments of the bar that says if you were to be appointed to the electoral court, you will be presented with legal issues that you do not appear to have encountered before? Yes, I did. Is that a fair comment? I would say, um, as a, a lawyer, a person who is a lifelong learner, when the law is at my disposal, I can research the law, I can find my answers there. I've got colleagues also that are also there. I wouldn't see any problems. Thank you, Ms. Ndlovu. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you very much, Commissioner Fauré. You're excused, Ms. Ndlovu. Thank you. Thank you very much.